Hi, my name is Wayne Hellman, and this is the fifth in a series of SmartFox Server 2X video tutorials. In this episode, I'm going to walk through the runtime monitoring of a SmartFox server with the admin tool. So let me just open up a browser here. Now, I've already logged on to a remote SmartFox server, and I'm looking at the dashboard. Now, what we're going to do is add clients slowly uh, and watch the monitor as it responds to those clients' activity. So I've written a tool here that's going to allow us to add batches of clients. Now the clients we're going to be adding are extremely heavy clients. They're going to be sending mass amounts of public messages, private messages, object messages, and requesting extension responses as well. So let's go ahead and add our first batch here. That's going to add 10 clients and you're going to see a spike in the network traffic. Now the red bar here is outgoing traffic. So those are messages coming from the server to clients, whereas the green bar is incoming messages. And you can see outgoing is always going to be a little higher than incoming. That's because we have to distribute messages that come into possibly all users in a room. To the right of that are some general service statistics. We've got the total concurrent users, sessions, and sockets. Now, those are all the 12, although they could differ if you were using Blue Box, but we've got 12 right now because we have two administrators and 10 clients. So why don't we go ahead and add another batch of clients here. You can see that number that just jumped up to 22. We get a network traffic spike as well. And you're going to see that our data transfer is starting to pick up as well. If we move to the top of the dashboard, to the far left, we've got server uptime. And in the middle, we got CPU usage, which is obviously a great way to tell how your server is performing. To the right of that, we've got our thread count. Now, that's going to stay basically at 35 for our entire test. We're not using any uh, clients that are calling extensions that are going to instantiate new threads. So it will remain at 35. Just below that is the active threads. This basically has all our threads for SmartFox that are running on the JVM. It's got their CPU time next to them and shows you basically how hard they are all working. Similar to a tool like Visual VM. So let's go ahead and add another batch of clients here. Now we've got 30 and I'm going to click this get totals button over here and you can see already we've received uh, you know over 2,600 uh, public messages, 480 private, over 1,000 object messages and 809 extension responses. Let's get do that again. You can see more than a thousand public messages just since the, the last dump. So I'm going to clear that right now, maybe add another batch. So now we've got a total of 40 clients. You can see garbage collection just ran. So the red bar is our used memory. Green is free. The red is going to gradually increase uh, as we use memory. And once garbage collection runs, it's going to reallocate to free again. So let's move over here to the system queue. On the left hand side here is the system workload and system control and request queue. Now the system thread is the thread that handles public messages, private messages, a lot of out of the box functionality. So our threads here, you'll notice even with 40 clients, extremely heavy clients, let's just get our totals here. We've already done, you know, over 8,000 uh, messages coming in. And our system controller queue is not showing any signs of stress. The system workload is remaining low. SmartFox server is a finely tuned engine that has a great capacity to distribute all these messages quite easily. Our outgoing message queue, also extremely low. Now remember, we're taking two second snapshots at this point. We can move that down to one second snapshot. So we're not actually seeing all the messages come in and out. Uh, we're taking basically snapshot every one second to see the queue. Let's add a couple more clients here. We're now at a total of 50. Even with 50 clients, we're not seeing that many uh, messages pile up. So let's go back to the server status tab and you can see the network traffic starting to increase again. You can mouse over uh, either of the lines and get uh, indicators of the kilobytes per second uh, during the peaks. So let's move over now uh, to the zone monitor module. Let's just select our zone and click on the monitor selection button at the bottom. And we're first presented with a graphical display of the connected users over the past uh, few hours. We can slide this back the last 24 hours 
or move it back up to the past hour. At the top of this chart, we've got uh, some statistics of our zone, uh, the current number of users, maximum users, and average number of users. And if we click on the Runtime Zone Settings tab, we can actually edit some of the zone settings live. We'll just click Enter Edit Mode, and let's just change this to 600, and then we can click Submit Changes, and that will be live. Now we can do the exact same thing with our rooms over here, so let's just bring that up. And we're going to be presented with our room list and the number of clients in each room. So let's go ahead and select room 1 and monitor selection. We're going to be presented with the same type of runtime room settings that the zone had. We could select enter edit mode and edit the settings live as well. The Permissions and Events tab allows you to view which events have been selected for the specific room. It also allows you to set the maximum number of room variables. The Runtime Room Variables tab gives you a data grid that displays the active room variables in this room, gives you their properties, and will display their values. It gives you a really good snapshot of what is actively in the room at any given point in time. The Room Extension tab just displays the selected room extension. We've got this My Extension that we created in Episode 4. And lastly, let's monitor a user. So let's select a user here and click Monitor Selection. This is going to bring up a screen specific to this user. It's going to indicate the user's ID, their username, the uh, IP and port they're using to communicate with the server, whether they're using blue box tunneling or a socket connection, their session ID, and some other information specific to the user. Directly below that are some graphs that indicate how the user is actually performing. The top two are packet queue and drop messages. Any activity there is going to indicate the client is starting to have some trouble, usually caused by poor connections. The bottom two are data written and read. If we scroll down a little bit, we've got the geolocation of the actual user and we can click on the show map button which will take us to a Google map of actually where that user is located. Below that we've got a kick user form so we can just type in a message here you are being kicked. It's got a delay and we can kick that user after the delay. Similarly we can move to the ban user and type in you are being banned. Banning can either be by a username or by IP. We can also give a duration of how long we want to ban the user for and select a delay in which we want it to take effect. So let's go ahead and ban this user. And we're going to go over now to the ban manager. And you're going to notice that our user number 50 has been banned and our message is there. We can also ban a user right here in the ban manager. Let's ban user number 51. And here we can say that we never want the user to have access to the system again and we can specify which zone as well. We can type in a message and a reason. You are being banned and inappropriate behavior. And let's go ahead and ban this user. And you'll see they automatically appear in our list of banned users. Now, we can also go to the banned IP address tab, and that would list the users that have been banned by IP. However, we haven't done that because all of our users are coming in using the same IP. So let's go back to the dashboard here and have a look at our client tool here. You're going to notice there's a couple warnings here for uh, events that have not been handled. Those were our two users being kicked. I'm just going to add some more users here and maybe check on how the system has been running. Remember, we've been running this since this tutorial started. Let's look at our messages. We've got you know thousands and thousands of messages being sent. Let's add some more. Here's a display of the breakdown and percentages of how the clients have received all the messages. Add some more clients here. We now have totals, you know, 74,000 public messages received and so on.
Our system queues are still showing nothing. Let me change the refresh rate to one second. We've got green messages, which is great. You want to be careful of any other color, which would show the server starting to show some stress. Back in the main dashboard, we can see the server is easily handling the thousands of messages being broadcast to clients. Lastly, if there is a specific need you may have that would help you monitor your server, the admin tool supports custom modules so you can build your own and enhance what is already there. Remember to check out smartfoxserver.com for updates and support.